So this is a quick demonstration of the entire coronary circulation in a heart. This heart has been extracted from the cadaver there. So this is the aortic outflow. And inside, if you look inside, we see the three semilunar valves of the aorta. So this is the right aortic coronary sinus. This is the left aortic coronary sinus. Arising from the right aortic coronary sinus, there's a small ostium. And from there, we have rising this artery. This is the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery initially runs in the right part of the anterior atrioventricular group. And it is under cover of the right auricle for a short distance. And then it emerges, it continues in the atrioventricular group, and then it winds around the right margin of the heart, and it goes in the posterior part of the atrioventricular group. And then, in the region of the crux of the heart, it makes a bend, and it continues down as the, in the posterior interventricular group, and it finishes there. So this is the entire course of the right coronary artery. When it is in this Initial portion, it is, as we mentioned, it's called the RCA, right coronary artery. Once it reaches the posterior part of the coronary groove, it is called right posterior coronary artery. And when it is running in the posterior interventricular groove, it is called the posterior descending artery. Now let's take a look at the branches and the distribution of the RCA, right coronary artery as a whole. The first branch is this one. This is the anterior branch of the right atrium. And this anterior branch of the right atrium, as we can see, is supplying the right atrium. And this is the one which also supplies the SA node through the SA nodal artery. Of course, we cannot see the SA node here. So this is the anterior branch of the right atrium. Then we can see numerous branches coming to the right ventricle as well as to the right atrium. When it makes a curve and comes to the right posterior coronary groove, it gives this branch. This is the right marginal artery. And this right marginal artery runs on the right margin of the heart. And then when it continues here, in the region of the crux of the heart, where it makes a bend and continues as the posterior interventricular artery, it gives rise to this branch. And we can see that branch here. This branch goes deep inside and it supplies the atrioventricular node in 80% of the people and it also supplies the AV bundle of his. And when it is running as the posterior descending artery, it supplies the posterior one-third of the interventricular septum. In this particular cadaver, we also notice that the right coronary artery, or more precisely the right posterior coronary artery, is giving a separate branch. And this branch is going under the middle cardiac vein, and it is supplying the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the left ventricle. Now, this is a very important point. Occlusion of this portion the right posterior coronary artery or the posterior descending artery can produce diaphragmatic or inferior wall ischemia. And that will cause anginal pain, not in the classical place, but it will be anginal pain referred to the epigastrium, which can be a source of mistaken diagnosis. So this is about the course and the distribution of the right coronary artery. So therefore, to summarize, the right coronary artery supplies the right atrium, it supplies most of the right ventricle. It supplies the SA node in 60% of the population through its anterior branch of the right atrium. It supplies the AV node in 80% of the population. It supplies the diaphragmatic, the inferior surface of the heart by means of its posterior descending branch. And in this case, two separate branches, which I told you the clinical importance of this. So this is about the right coronary artery. Now let's take a look at the left coronary artery. Again, let's go back to the beginning. This is the interior of the aortic opening. This is the left aortic coronary sinus. And there's an ostium there. And arising from that ostium is the left main coronary artery. Initially, the left main coronary artery also runs in the left part of the atrioventricular groove. And it is in under cover of the left auricle for a short distance. And immediately thereafter, it divides into two main branches. This is one main branch. This is known as the anterior interventricular artery. And the other main branch is this one. This is the circumflex artery. So let's take them one by one. The anterior interventricular artery, it's also referred to as the left anterior descending artery, LAD in clinical parlance. This runs in the anterior part of the interventricular groove. And this is a major supply of the left ventricle. And it also supplies part of the right ventricle. It supplies the anterior two-thirds of the interventricular septum. And it also supplies 
the AV bundle of his and it also supplies the right and the left bundles, the conduction system. And then it makes a curve just adjacent to the apex of the heart and it goes and it starts traveling up in the posterior triventricular groove and it stops short of the posterior descending artery, but it is not anastomose. The anterior descending artery, as it is descending down, it gives rise to a number of branches which run diagonally like this. In this case, we can see only one branch. This is referred to as the diagonal branch. In other cases, there will be more than one, in which case we refer to, refer to them as diagonal one, D1, D2, etc. This also supplies the left ventricle. And if you notice the course of the anterior interventricular artery or the left anterior descending artery, you notice that it is tortuous. This is a very common feature of arteries anywhere in the human body where there is movement of the structures. And in this case, because the ventricular wall is in motion all the time, tortuosity is essential. Now let's take a look at the other branch. This is the circumflex artery. The circumflex artery also runs in the anterior part of the coronary groove. And then it winds around. That is the reason why it's called circumflex. And it goes, runs in the posterior part of the coronary groove. And then it supplies the bulk of the left ventricle. In this position, we can see the branches which are going to the left ventricle. It also gives a branch to the AV bundle of his. So therefore, the AV bundle of his receives branch from the posterior descending artery, anterior descending artery, as well as from the circumflex artery. Now, this circumflex artery, in an ideal situation, gives rise to a branch which runs on the left margin of the heart. But in this case, we notice that the left marginal artery is arising separately. It is not arising from the circumflex. And we can see that there are two. One of them is arising from here, from the LAD, and the other one is also arising from the near the LAD at its bifurcation into the circumflex. And these are the left marginal artery. And these are the ones which are supplying the left margin of the heart, which is formed mostly by the left ventricle. Coming back to the left marginal artery, which we have noticed in this case is dividing into two branches, here and here, and it's also supplying separately the part of the left ventricle. This is also in clinical parlance referred to as the obtuse marginal. And again, depending on the number of them, they are referred to as OM1, OM2. So in this case, we can see that there is one OM1, OM2, and OM3. So again, to summarize the distribution of the left coronary artery, the left coronary artery supplies the left atrium, most of the left ventricle, it supplies the anterior two-thirds of the interventricular septum, it supplies the AV bundle, it supplies the right and the left bundles, and it also supplies the region of the apex of the heart. Now, let's come quickly to the venous drainage. We will remember three principal veins. We'll start from the anterior interventricular groove. It is not visible here, but running with the LAD, left anterior descending artery, there will be a vein running up here. And that is known as the anterior intraventricular vein. This vein, as it runs up, it reaches the coronary groove. And then it becomes known as, and we can see part of it here, it becomes known as the great cardiac vein. And we can see part of the great cardiac vein here, GCV. This great cardiac vein, it runs with the circumflex artery and this other part of the great cardiac vein. Now here there is an important anatomical fact. The great cardiac vein and the circumflex, both of them run in the coronary groove. But one is a vein, other is an artery. And the blood flow in both of them are in the same direction, which is a unique situation in the human body here. The great cardiac vein then continues to run in the posterior part of the coronary groove. And then in the posterior part of the coronary groove, it receives a vein from the left atrium which is not visible here because it was very small and friable and that is known as the oblique vein of left atrium which is a remnant of the left superior vena cava and once that left oblique vein of left atrium opens into the great cardiac vein in this region then the rest of it becomes known as the coronary sinus and this is the largest venous drainage of the heart and we have lifted up the coronary sinus here and now let's take a look at the tributaries which open into the great cardiac vein and coronary sinus collectively. So let's start from the left margin of the heart. We can see this tributary which accompanies the 
left marginal artery which I mentioned earlier. This is the left marginal vein. So this is the left marginal vein which opens into the great cardiac vein. The oblique vein of left atrium I have already mentioned. Then we have this vein. This is draining on the posterior surface of the left ventricle. This is the left posterior ventricular vein and this is also opening into the coronary sinus. Then we have this vein running in the posterior interventricular groove along with the posterior descending artery and this is referred to as the middle cardiac vein. And finally, we have this vein here which opens into the coronary sinus near its termination. This is the small cardiac vein. The other end of the small cardiac vein, a remnant of that is visible here. I have cannulated the coronary sinus in the posterior coronary groove and we can see that the other end of the probe has come into the right atrium. So this is the opening of the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus opens into the right atrium just behind the fossa ovalis, very close to the interatrial septum. And in this region, if you see closely, you see some filamentous structures. Those are the remnants of the valves of the coronary sinus and it is also referred to as the Thebesian valve. And ad additionally, we incidentally, we can also see remnant of the valve in around the opening of the inferior vena cava. Okay, so this is the opening and in the region of the opening of the coronary sinus is the location of the atrioventricular node. So this is the complete venous drainage and just to complete the story, there are numerous other veins, small veins which are not visible here, which are referred to as the anterior cardiac veins and the venae cordis minimae which open mostly into the right atrium directly. So this is the venous drainage and the arterial drainage of the heart. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanya signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.